Going up next, a recent conference held here in town unveils the rules of engagement in a U.S. military conflict, the surprising rules that have many American soldiers defending themselves in a court of law. This is Fox News First. Hi, right, welcome back. It is 810 right now. The rules of engagement and wounded warrior support. It was a conference that happened Tuesday at the uh, Center for Terrorism Law at St. Mary's University. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that this morning and also how you can help, even though already happened. Julie Staffel with St. Mary's is here to tell us about that. It's fascinating stuff and there's such a military presence here in San Antonio that it's going to get a lot of people's attention. So thanks for being here. No, thank you for having me. How did the conference go? It went well. We had a great turnout. Um, by the end of the day, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Mm. Um, <clears throat> this particular case that we are dealing with, the Lieutenant Joshua Waddell, involves um, some self-imposed rules of engagement that can get a bit absurd um, and over the top. They can be politically motivated. I, I want to clarify it uh, for the Law Center. We are not talking about law standing, right. long standing laws of war um, and conventions that our military is used to operating under in times of war and always has. Mm -hmm. We're talking about these rules of engagement that can change. We had a Marine at the conference yesterday describing receiving pamphlets mm -hmm. week to week with updated laws of war. I mean, uh, excuse me, rules of engagement. Rules of engagement yeah. um, and that can get tricky. This is an unconventional combat situation we're talking about. This enemy is not in a uniform, um, and these, it's a very sticky situation. And we've got a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on. Um, the Josh Waddell case is a great example of that. Right. Um, he, uh, now, in the Center for Terrorism Law, we have represented a lot of soldiers who have been falsely accused of war crimes. Right. And we legally have a remedy there. Um, and we have never lost a case because we only represent the innocent. But in this Joshua Waddell case, um, it's unusual because it's an administrative decision. These fit rep reports um, are the death of, a silent death to a Marine. Um, once he gets one, his career is over. Mm -hmm. Legally, we don't have the same due process abilities. So we have a solution and it's twofold. One, we're working on legislation at the center um, that would give us a secondary, that would require a secondary review board right. um, to look over these fit rep reports before we stamp this dishonorable you know, label on our soldiers. And then secondly, we're asking the public to get involved. You can Google the Center for Terrorism Law's website. Um, you can, there's a petition there in support of Joshua. There's an article by the Washington Examiner going over the facts of the case. And right. Uh, it, we'd be happy if you want to call up to the center <clears throat> if anyone wants more information on the facts of the case. Um, essentially, a man has lost his career for disabling a tractor. This is what we're talking about here. Okay, so because you're, you're, I know you're dumbing it down there because I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> no, and, and, and <clears throat> because I know there's so many people here, again, with military ties, and they want to know what you're doing, how they can help. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you're literally trying to save careers here. Absolutely. Um, we've even, this, along these same lines, we've represented soldiers who have been falsely accused of first-degree murder mm -hmm. um, for following orders and taking out an enemy combatant um, le lawfully and legally under the law of war. Uh, and and those, those, deci those decisions and charges have been overturned because right. of the ridiculous political yeah. nature of them. Now, I mean, I'd like, to, I'd like to note that Joshua Waddell himself, Lieutenant Waddell, and his father, a SEAL commander, yes. retired, did not want to go public with this story mm -hmm. because they did not want to dishonor the Marines or their leaders right. and I think that's a perfect picture of what it's like to right. stand behind something you've committed to mm -hmm. and to stand beside the people that you serve with and the people you lead and the people you follow and I think some of our politicians and some of the higher ups in the chains of command could take notes right it's on one that. side of the military or you know the war effort that you don't always hear about but I, and I, your work continues it never stops I can just hear how passionate you are about it and if people would like more information they would like to help in the Waddell case they can go to the website and we'll link it at foxsanantonio.com it's Thanks. the St. Mary's Center for Terrorism Law Julie I appreciate you coming Thank in you and for helping having explain us. it and sharing this with the rest of us Great. Thank you.